Hi, third grade, it's Mrs. D'Amico. We're going to get started with day three of unit three with our drill sounds warm up. So repeat after me. A wash ah, A squash ah, A safe A, E Pete E, E ed E, I pine I, O octopus ah, O home O, U up a, uh. U mule U, U rule U. Very good. Reviewed all of the long and short vowel sounds. Okay, third grade. Next, we're going to review a new concept, but one again that you should have learned in second grade. So let's go ahead and listen today. Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Ann here again. And we're going to continue to review some concepts today from unit three. And there's only one week in this unit, um, but this is day three of that unit three. So it's the only week that there is from unit three. And it's a good review of some of the concepts that you may be familiar with from uh, remembering from second grade. Today, we're going to look at the rules about syllable division. Syllable division is very important because it helps us to break up bigger words. We know that words are made up of parts, so little words like cat are made up of three sounds, right? At. We know that. That's You've known that for a long time. But we're going to be looking at bigger words that have more than one syllable in them. Remember, a syllable is a push of breath. So like the word catnip, two syllables, two pushes of breath, catnip. So two pushes of breath when we say that word catnip. So we know we could break it up into parts. So, but how do we know when we're reading where to break up words? Well, that's what we're gonna review today. And a lot of this should look familiar to you, but it'll remind you about reading those bigger words. So let's take a look first at a word I wrote up here on the syllable frames. Take a look at that. What is that word, do you know? It's in how many parts? Two parts, so we have Napkin, right? Napkin. So if we read it, we read it by syllables. Napkin. That helps us to read bigger words when we look at the different parts that there are. But how do I know where to split this up? How do I know when a word is needs to be split up into parts? Well, we can look for those vowels. If there are two vowels that are separated, we know we need to split that word between the vowels somewhere. This word has the A and then a P and a K and an I. So we have our vowels A and I, and we have two consonants in between, the P and the K. When we have two consonants like that, we usually split between those two consonants. So then we again have nap, kin, and the whole word is napkin. That's correct. Good. Let's look at another word here. I spelled this out so you could see the vowels a little bit better. All right, so I used my sound cards up here so you could see this big word here. And this has one of our vowel consonant E syllables in it. So take a look at how many vowels do you see here in this word that I spelled? Look at the pink cards, the salmon, right? So we see three different syllables, I mean, three different um, vowels in there, right? So three different vowels, but one of these vowels, the E is silent. So we won't count that as we're, we won't need to divide that part of it because we know it's part of the A consonant E that we see here. It's part of that vowel consonant E that we need, all right? So what we're gonna do is look across the road, word and we see two vowels that are separated and we have how many consonants in between? That's right, two, the S and the T are in between. So we're gonna split between those two consonants. So it would be, I'll move it a little bit so you can see. We have miss, take, mistake, right? Mistake. So here we have our closed and our vowel consonant E syllable. And a lot of times that vowel consonant E syllable is in the last, the final syllable of words. So you have to be looking out for that vowel consonant E and not get confused about that vowel making any sound on there. That vowel E is gonna be silent on there. 
All right, so let's take a look at a couple other words. I'll put this one down and we're going to review a couple other rules that we might need. All right, let's look at these here. We have rep, tile. Good. So we have the vowel E and I. How many consonants in between? We have two consonants in between. So we need to split between those two consonants. So our first syllable, I'll move this, is rep, second syllable, tile. Good, whole word, reptile, right. You probably are familiar with that word, reptile. All right, let's look at another situation. If we have these two syllables, all right, we have the vowel A and I, but we only have one consonant in between. So we have A and I are split, they're, they're separated from each other, and we have one consonant, the B in between. So when we split that, we have to put that B with the first syllable for now, because we need to make it closed, all right? So we know about closed syllables and vowel consonant E we're working on right now. So if we read this word, first syllable would be hab, second syllable, it. What's the whole word? Habit. Say it again. Habit. That's right. So that helps us break up those big words so that we can figure out what that word says if we look at it in syllables. Let's look at a couple other situations that you've gone over. I'll erase some of these. All right, let's try another big word. All right, let's try this word. All right, this word, I split it up. I have a U and an E as my vowel, vowels in this word, so I knew I had to split between them, but I see a digraph in there. Do you see that SH? We always keep a digraph together. So we're gonna keep a digraph together and put it with that second syllable and we put the T with the first syllable. This is also a compound word, so they're a little bit easier to figure out. It has two closed syllables in a compound word. So let's read this. Nut, shell, whole word, nutshell. Good job, all right. Let's try another one that might be a little bit challenging. All right, I wrote the two parts. I have two vowels, the O and the E, and they're separated from each other. So I've got a split in between there. But I see the CK is a digraph, so I need to keep that together. So I'm gonna use that to um, close in the first syllable there. So the first syllable is rock, second syllable, it, rocket. Remember that ET sometimes sounds like it. You might remember that from other words you've done before. All right, let's take a look at another situation of an even bigger word. Let me try this word. Ready? All right, we've got two vowels, one here, the E, and we've got an O here, but look, this E on the end, remember, is gonna be silent because that's part of our vowel consonant E. So I've got to have these separated from each other and that tells me to look in between and I see one, two, three, I see three consonants in between there. So when there's three consonants, usually we're gonna keep the blend with the second. We're gonna keep this P and L with the second syllable and close in the first syllable with just one consonant. So we're gonna take that and close in the first syllable. Let's try it. X. Plode. See that vowel consonant E there? X plode. What's the word? Explode. That's right. Explode. Good. So we've got a closed and a vowel consonant E syllable. All right. So it's a little bit tricky when you get into those bigger words because three consonants in between, usually we just need one consonant to close in the first syllable and then we need um, that blend to 
go with the second syllable there. Okay. All right. That's a lot of information. So let's try to look at a couple more situations here. A lot of times when we have that vowel consonant E, as I said, it's usually at the end of the word. It's usually the, the last syllable in a word, but sometimes it can be also, let me put it one up here. If it's a compound word, it can be in the first syllable. All right, let's take a look here. So we've got two vowels that are separated here, but one, but this pattern you recognize is the vowel consonant E. All right, so that's going to tell us that that's a vowel consonant E word, and we're going to keep that together. This is also a compound word. What is this word, boys and girls? Do you know what this is? Fire. Let me scoop it. Man. Fireman. All right. So we've got our vowel consonant E in the first syllable, but this is also a compound word. So often compound words have the vowel consonant E sometimes in the beginning there. So when we hear vowel consonant E in the beginning, it's usually because it's a compound word there. But most often vowel consonant E is in that second final syllable. All right, so let's take a look at how to mark up this type of word. Let me write it with a little bigger pen in case you can't see it. All right, let's try this. Here's that word, fireman, all right? So remember, we scoop it into parts for each syllable. This is our vowel consonant E. That tells us this vowel is long and the E is silent. And then our second syllable is closed because it's got that um, closed in, one vowel closed in, all right? So we can mark that. We also realize that this is a glued sound, so that could help us with that A sound in there, fireman. Okay, let's try one more. Let's see, I'm gonna erase this and try to mark up one more word that you can see. All right, we have two vowels here, and I see my silent E on the end there. So I have two vowels that are separated. Both of them are an I. So I'm gonna scoop in between because I have two consonants in between. I'm gonna scoop between and we have a closed and that tells me the I is gonna be short and we have a vowel consonant E. That tells me that this is long and the E is silent. So the word is invite. A word, invite. Good job. So that is how we mark up our words when they're more than one syllable, but it's so helpful when you're reading and spelling. If you have to break up a word, you'll be able to figure it out a lot easier if you can break it into syllables and then you know what those vowels are gonna say in the syllables, okay? So thank you for your attention with this today and we'll see you again next time. Okay, third grade, the last thing we're going to do today in our foundations lesson is take a look at our homophones or our sound alike words. So say the word that's on the screen and don't forget to show me the signal. Remember, we've been practicing so that we can understand the meaning with the word. So say the word here, right, show me. Yes, you're writing with a pencil, you're pretending, right? Okay, this one is also right, but what's the signal? Use your right hand to show correct. This one means correct, you are right. The next one, no. Remember, if you understand something, you know it. What about this no? Opposite of yes, shake your head no. This word, which, which one were you thinking? But this which, right. We just had that stirring the witch's brew. Okay, how about this one? Son, S-O-N, do you remember the signal? It's a boy child who grows up, right? This sun is the bright star in the sky that makes you squint, right? How about this word? Some, I have some candy left over from Halloween. This some, 
is your answer. We make a plus sign with our fingers. It's the answer to an addition problem. So the sum of two plus two is four, right? Try this one. Ooh, band. Do you remember which one? If you're banned from doing something, you're not allowed to do it anymore, right? But this band is music, playing the drums. I'd play the air drums. Good. How about this word? Guest. This is a newer one. If you're a guest, I stand and I welcome you inside. I invited you. Welcome, guest. But this guest is, you were thinking about it, and then you made a prediction. Think about it. You make a guess, right? Okay, missed. This one we make a little X and we frown. You missed something on an assignment. Or if you missed someone, you know, you're missing them. Okay, how about this missed? Remember water droplets, tiny water droplets? When it's real foggy outside, sometimes it's very mist. The air has a lot of mist in it. Okay, now I think we're off to our brand new ones for today's lesson. So let's take a look at this word. The word is plain. Say it. Plain. Spell it with me. Go. P-L-A-I-N. Plain. Okay, now this kind of plain means something ordinary or not very interesting. So I don't know. The shirt I have on today, it's plain, right? There's nothing really written on it. It's, um, it's just a solid shirt. It's a solid color. So if it's plain, oh, this one's a hard one to think of a signal for. Maybe we could just say, hmm, you know, you make that face. Hmm, it's plain. It's plain. It's nice, but it's plain. Okay. I kind of shrug my shoulders a bit and make that face like hmm, plain. Okay. But this plain, let's look. P-L-A-N-E, plain. You should know what kind this is, right? You can get your airplane wings out because this is a machine that flies through the sky. Very good. Now let's quickly add our new plane and plane in the back of our student notebook. So get your castle book out and turn open to the sound alike section. Page 103, you will see both new homophones. Page 103. Go ahead and get there. Okay, so on page 103 in your notebook, the first plane that you'll see is P-L-A-I-N. Okay, so you can write down, maybe pause the video after I'm done reading, so you can copy it. Something ordinary or not very interesting. It's just plain. Maybe you prefer plain bagels instead of chocolate chip ones. Or, you know, like I said, my sweater is kind of plain today. It's just a solid color, not much design. Okay, pause the video if you need more time, and then we'll move on to the other plain. Okay, P L A N E is a machine that flies through the sky. And again, you can pause your video here so that you can finish copying that down on your own. Okay, third grade, now we're going to play a quick game of guess which one. So I will read a sentence. You will listen for just the homophone that you hear in the sentence, and you will write down on a piece of paper at home which homophone I used. Okay, so I'm giving you a hot tip because since you're not in class and you can't use the tools in the room, perhaps I have both of them here for you to look at. All right, so my sentence is, the man guessed the volume of milk in the cup. So like we just did a game like this recently where we guessed how many pieces of candy were in the jar. So if you guess how many of something there are, which guest is it? Is it G-U-E-S-T or G-U-E-S-S-E-D? Write it down. Okay, if you wrote this one, you're correct. Remember, you think about it and you make a prediction. You guess it. Very good. Okay, my next sentence is, we can construct a plane from this kit. 
Is it P-L-A-I-N? We can build or construct. We can build a plane from this kit. Or is it P-L-A-N-E, plane? You decide which homophone you heard. We can construct a plane from this kit. Okay, hopefully you're writing P-L-A-N-E. It's a model airplane, right, that they're trying to build that would fly through the sky. Very good. Okay, the last one for today. I will conduct that band. If you're a conductor, that means you lead it. Is it B-A-N-N-E-D or B-A-N-D? Yes. If you're conducting a band, you're leading a musical group of instruments. Very good. B-A-N-D is correct. All right, third grade, thanks for joining me today. I will see you back next time.